You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Death could not. Good morning and welcome to Christchurch East Greenwich for our Sunday morning worship today. My name is Margaret and I'm the vicar. And as usual, I'll be joined by other members of our church family who'll lead our sung worship, read from the Bible, pray and take part in other bits of the service. In our series on the parables of Jesus, today we're exploring the parable of the growing seed and the parable of the mustard seed. Parables which remind us of the miracle of a seed growing and what it tells us about life with Jesus, a life full of growth and flourishing. Again, we'll be exploring the parables in different ways today. Sue will be sharing the parable of the mustard seed in the style of godly play, which is the way we usually tell stories at Junior Church. And then we'll also be hearing from Sue as she talks about leading our Christchurch Junior Church and growing faith with our children and young people. Reverend John will be helping us to explore the parables further when he talks to us later in the service. I really want to encourage you to enter into these parables as we explore them in different ways in our church services and in our connect groups. I hope and pray that this parable series will help us all to flourish and grow, to know that growth is inerrant in the kingdom of God especially as we face the ongoing challenges of lockdown three and all the anxiety of the current pandemic and accompanying crisis. Just a reminder that some of us are still sowing and growing our crest seeds in our own homes. Please keep putting up pictures of your crests on our social media. Now I'm up in Scotland. I'm here because I'm giving my parents some help and support at the moment. So please do pray for me and for them. Their names are Helen and Barry. As we gather to worship God today, wherever we are, I hope that everyone is able to join in our worship and to encounter God. So as we join together in our wonderful diversity, let's greet one another. The Lord be with you and also with you. In these challenging times when we're unable to meet together in real life, when we're unable to join together in sung worship, unable to greet one another with a loving touch, our first song reminds us that we can build our hope on Jesus as we sing, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Saviour's love, through the storm he is Lord, Lord of all. Let's turn to God in worship as Jim and the worship band lead us in singing, Christ Alone, Cornerstone.
than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness ceases to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging We come to the moment in the service where we pause, reflect and say sorry to God for the things that we've got wrong. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. We pause to think about what we want to say sorry for. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
We confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer with our special prayer, the collect for today, as we think about the parable of the growing seed and the mustard seed. Lord, we give you thanks for the wonders of your creation, as we see how nature brings growth and plenty for all living beings, we pray that we too may promote the growth of the kingdom of God in this world through the light of your presence and the water of your spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now Kim is going to read to us from the Bible. And then we're going to see Sue sharing the story of the parable of the mustard seed in the style of godly play and after that Reverend John is going to speak to us. Today's reading is taken from Mark chapter 4 verses 26 through to 32. Verses 26 to 29 the parable of the growing seed. He also said this is what the kingdom of God is like a man scatters seed on the ground night and day whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Verses 30 to 32, the parable of the mustard seed. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder what this is. I wonder if it could be a parable. It looks pretty old and parables are really old. Sometimes they're thousands of years old. So it could be a parable. It's also gold. Gold is very precious. Parables are very precious. Sometimes Parables are more precious even than gold. It also looks a bit like a present. And parables are like presents. They were given to us before we were born, before even our grandparents were born. A very special present. I wonder whether anything inside will help us to work out whether it's a parable. I wonder what this could be. While it's very yellow, it's very round. It could be like a sun or a sunflower. I wonder if there's anything else in the box. There is something in the box. There is a man, and there was a man, and he was a man who said such amazing things and did such amazing things that people started to follow him, to listen to what he said and to see what he did. And the man talked about a kingdom, and it was the sort of kingdom 
that nobody had been to before. And none of their friends had been there. They didn't know where it was. So they just couldn't help themselves. They had to ask him, what is this kingdom like? And the man said, the kingdom is like when a man takes a small seed, the tiniest seed, so tiny, you can't even see it on the tip of my finger. And he plants it in the ground and the seed grows. It grows into a tree and then its branches reach up high into the sky and it's covered with leaves. And from that tiniest of seeds, a tall tree grows. And it's like the birds that fly to the tree and settle in its branches. And the birds feel so comfortable there that they build nests in the tree. and stay amongst the leaves in the branches of the tree. I wonder what the man did while the tree was growing. I wonder if the man has a name. I wonder if the birds were happy to find the tree. I wonder if the birds are happy living in the tree. I wonder what the tree could really be. I wonder, have you ever seen a tree like this? Have you ever seen anything like this whole thing? I wonder what your favourite part of the story is. And so we have the birds. and the tree that grew from the tiniest seed. And the man. Good morning. Today I'm going to talk about two parables of Jesus continuing our series. And they are the parable of the growing seed and the parable of the mustard seed. Firstly, the parable of the growing seed is quite remarkable because Jesus points out the wonder of nature and God's creation, especially the growth and development of living things. Seed for crops such as wheat is scattered onto the soil. The sower doesn't know how it grows, but over time it develops and is then harvested. Here's a little film of growing plants I made with the cress seeds that were sent out a couple of weeks ago by, for Christchurch members. It's a little bit clunky but I hope you can see the growth of the cress. Also at the beginning there's a Playmobil model of Martin Luther demonstrating his New Testament translation because, as you may know, the Word of God is represented by the seed that is sown. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapour of your breath the planets fall. Well, we all think we know how things grow. But actually, the detail of it is astonishing. If you think plant growth is amazing, imagine how, in human biology, a child grows from a tiny fertilised egg in the womb. It's unbelievably complex how every cell and body structure goes to the right place to make a new human being, not to mention the formation of the brain, which is particularly incredible. Jesus says this growth of living things is like the kingdom of God. 
He means that we can be reassured that God's kingdom grows in the world even though we don't know how. For example, sometimes God uses people who have little idea that God is at work through them. I remember thinking during Live Aid concerts in 1985 that God used a lot of what, what might be said to be posing pop stars gathered together by Bob Geldof to bring relief of suffering in Ethiopia. They raised £150 million while many others did next to nothing. Whether they believe in God or not, <clears throat> many good people work for justice and against evil in this world. The kingdom of God grows and we don't know how. How much more then should we as Christians also work to further God's kingdom? But this isn't necessarily through trying harder and harder to do more and more things. Like the growing plant that uses water and light, we further God's kingdom by allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us. And the Holy Spirit in the scriptures is often symbolised as water and light. Years ago, I used to worry that I had to do a lot for God, otherwise that was my failure as a Christian. And then someone gave me a little book called The Vine and the Branches. We'll be looking at that story in a few weeks' time. It's from John 15, where Jesus said, He was the vine and we are the branches. If we want to produce fruit for God's kingdom, we do that not by our own efforts, but by remaining in the vine. In other words, we remain in the faith, remaining in Jesus and allowing the Spirit to work through us. Secondly, in today's Gospel, Jesus tells the parable of the mustard seed. Theologians think Jesus could be referring to black mustard, which grows much taller than ordinary garden plants. If that's the case, it means that just as the small mustard seed grows to a relatively huge size, even the tiniest acts can lead to great things. Look at the late Captain Sir Tom walking in his garden to raise money for the NHS. He and the family expected to raise maybe a thousand pounds, but within weeks he'd raised over 30 million pounds from that simple act of self-giving. Another possibility is that the mustard plants Jesus spoke about was something called Salvadora persisca, sometimes called the toothbrush tree because in the Middle East people have used its fibrous branches to clean their teeth. However, Salvadora is also a plant that is difficult to get rid of in the garden, a bit like mint plants or even worse, Japanese knotweed. If Jesus meant this plant, Salvadora, he meant to say that the kingdom of God is persistent and cannot be removed from the garden of life, as it were. God is everywhere and his kingdom is found all over the world. In the conflict between good and evil and justice and injustice, we can be assured that the kingdom of God cannot be overcome and will never go away. Especially as we live through the times we are now in, we can have that confidence that God's kingdom is here to stay. That also means that the little things we do to further God's kingdom can grow and grow, we don't know how. All things we do for God are not worthless, but are of lasting and even eternal value. Amen. So we affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we marvel at the miraculous growth of a tiny seed, we're reminded of the awesome and creative God we worship as we sing, As you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born, in the vapour of your breath the planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. 
Jim and the worship band will lead us in singing, So Will I. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets fall. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made Every burning star a signal fire of grace If creation sings your praises, so will I God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, your syllable empty your voice. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you've said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see your heart in everything. Sky, the canvas of your grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. The rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still fall shy, then we'll sing again a hundred million times. You chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as 
Last week, we had some emoji parables to make you think. This evening, Sunday at six, will be a time of thinking about the power of stories led by Tim, and it includes modern day parish parables, other members of our church family talking about the power of stories in their lives, worship and prayer. And here is a taster for this evening of a modern day parable set in the parish of East Greenwich, in fact, right outside Christchurch. It was late. The teacher looked at her tired and hungry crowd. With a smile on her face and a glint in her eye, she proclaimed, The kingdom of heaven is like your favourite takeaway. It picks you up when you need it the most. It takes away the burden of life, bringing refreshment to the weary. Come and join in the heavenly banquet. Truly, I tell you, it's finger-licking good. As we think about the kingdom of God being like a mustard seed, we're going to hear from Sue, our junior church leader. So here am I speaking to Sue about junior church and her role. Then Grace will lead us in our prayers of intercession. Hi Sue, it's really good to have you with us this morning. Hi Margaret, good to see you. And um, Sue, we're really grateful that you take the lead on junior church at Christchurch and um, that you commit so much time and energy to it. Can you tell us a bit about what gives you joy and gives you life about leading junior church? Yeah, sure. I really love, the main thing is I love being with the children and that gives me a great deal of joy. Um, and we've got lots of families with their, whose children are involved in junior church. Um, but the particular thing that gives me joy is seeing their faith grow. Um, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Even, um, even the youngest child has an experience of, of God. And I think that's really precious and something that we can nurture um, in junior church and to see that flourish and grow as the children grow is really special. Yeah, a bit like the story that you shared with us today of the mustard seed and the... Absolutely, growing. and something that can start off so tiny and become such a flourishing um, tree in the story, but as the children's faith grows and they flourish in life, um, I think there's, there's, a, there's a wonderful um, parallel with that story. Yeah, thank you. That's really precious. And um, how's it been during lockdown? What have been the blessings and challenges and leading junior church in this challenging time? Well, the challenges are sort of obvious, really, in that we can't meet together as we normally would. And we can't do really the physical things that we used to do together. Um, we used to play games as well as um, looking at the stories. Um, we used to have feasts, um, which was a really um, exciting part of the time we spent together. Um, but we've obviously we've had to adapt and we now meet on Zoom and we still do crafts and we still have praise songs. In fact, that's something we didn't necessarily do before. So that's been an added joy is that we 
quite often do worship songs and we do actions to them. And that's been really fun. And it's just lovely to see the children, um, even over Zoom. And um, we, as time's gone on, we've all got used to it. And so we, you know, the technology we've got used to and just interacting um, over Zoom and thinking of games that we can do together over Zoom. It's, and it, it's just really joyful. So that, that's really special. Um, how can we pray for you and the rest of the team who are involved in leading Junior Church? I know you and Bev have largely been doing it during lockdown, but there are other people who are involved. Yeah. Locally. How can we pray for you at the moment? Well, um, we just pray for inspiration, um, for good ideas, um, and for um, being, <clears throat> um, yeah, just being able to nurture those relationships that we have with the children that we have, even um, though we're not seeing them physically, that we can build those relationships with one another mm. and we can help them in their faith journeys. Okay, well, well, let's pray then. Lord God, we want to thank you for Sue. Thank you for calling her to lead our junior church and for all her wisdom and the way that she inspires the children and leads herself and with others and draws a team together who are really committed to seeing our children thrive and grow in their faith. We pray for Sue and the team that you'd inspire them, that you'd give them good ideas, that you'd um, help them to nurture these children and that um, both the faith of the children and the faith of Sue and the other leaders will grow and flourish as they share together. We pray particularly as they're meeting over Zoom at the moment, that you continue to hold junior church together. We pray for any children or families who aren't able to join in because of the te technology and pray that, that you are at work nurturing them in a way that speaks to them, even in these difficult times. Um, so we pray that you'll watch over and bless Sue, um, our junior church, owls and eagles. Um, Bev especially at the moment in lockdown and all those who get involved and we pray that in due course we'll be able to meet together um, as usual um, in our groups and share all those lovely things like the feast and um, stories and games um, in a way that we can't at the moment. We pray for this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thanks Sue. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we draw near to you this morning in hopeful expectation that you will draw near to us. Quiet our hearts and minds as we come before you in prayer, confident in the knowledge that you hear us and care for us, your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, in this period of so-called ordinary time in the liturgical year, we are mindful that life is far from ordinary at the moment. We give thanks for the vaccination programme and the hope of protection from the virus that this offers. Yet we know that there are difficult days ahead still and we long to be reunited with friends and family. We continue to ask for your blessing for those working in essential roles and risking their own health in order to care for and support the rest of society. We call on you, Lord, our refuge and strength to keep us steadfast as we navigate the challenges of the pandemic, finding peace and solace in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, thank you that your spirit moves among us and is often working in ways that are subtle. Like the seed that is planted as something so small, yet becomes something big and unmissable, your kingdom is being sown in the world around us. As we pray with Christians around the world for your kingdom to come, help us to realise our part in this process, to be faithful to the unique calling that each of us has on our lives as members of the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nourishing God, as we continue in this strange formation of digital community, unable to meet together in the way we would like to, we pray that you would minister to us as we seek to minister to the wider community of Greenwich. Thank you for all those who serve the church's ministry, whether through the food bank or the legal advice clinic, exhibiting Christ-like love by giving of themselves for others. May these acts of love point powerfully to the good news of the gospel and the inclusive welcome that Christ Church seeks to offer to all those who come into contact with our work in the community. 
In particular, we lift up to you the external partners that Christchurch supports, including USPG and their efforts in Tanzania to present, prevent the transmission of HIV from mother to child, and power the fight for its work to empower communities to prevent youth violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, thank you that you are not a God who is far off, unaware of the troubles we face, but a God who came to earth and knows what it is to suffer. We bring before you your cherished children who are unwell at this time, thinking of Margie, Ammonia, Mary, Donna, Kath, Marnaz, Charles, Joan, Essie, Joan, Barry, Helen, David and Angela. Thank you that they are known and loved by you. We ask for your blessing on those we have named and also those we bring to you in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up to you all these prayers and also those in our own hearts, sure that you hear us and love us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We also remember in our prayers today the Reverend Jean Griffiths, who sadly died earlier this week. Jean was well known to many at Christchurch as she met and married her husband Peter at Christchurch and they were part of the Christchurch players. She'll be sadly missed by her family and by others in the deanery who've worked alongside her in ministry. We draw our prayers to a close with the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. It's a tough and challenging time for us all at the moment as everyone is impacted by COVID-19 and the ongoing restrictions in different ways. So we find comfort in the knowledge that God's love is eternal as we sing, pour over me, pour over me, let your rain flood this thirsty soul, pour over me your waves of love, pour over me. Jim and the worship band are going to lead us in singing, your love shining like the sun. Your love shining like the sun, pouring like the rain, raging like the storm, refreshing me again. Ooh, I receive your love. me from the past. It purges every sin. It purifies my heart and heals me from within. Ooh, I receive your grace. Make this. 
this joy complete. Ooh, 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 I receive your peace. Our final blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Just a few notices. I'm delighted we're now well into our series on the parable of Jesus. As we explore parables around sowing and growing, I know lots of you who have been busy growing and sowing your crest seeds and posting pictures of your crests on our social media channels. It's not too late if you haven't sown your crest seeds yet. So there are lots of ideas of how to do it on our website. As we continue our series on the parables of Jesus, this evening, Sunday at six, we'll be thinking about the power of stories, how much we love a really good story. It'll be led by Tim and includes modern day parish parables, other members of the church family talking about the power of stories in their lives, worship and prayer. As I mentioned last week, following the very shocking news 10 days ago that the number of people who have died in the UK within 28 days of a positive coronavirus test is now well over 100,000, the archbishops have called us to pray. So I'd like to encourage you to set time every day to pray at 6pm if that works for you maybe light a candle and there are lots of resources and prayers to help you on the Church of England website. During lockdown three, we're holding morning prayer on Tuesday mornings for half an hour at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom. Do join us for half an hour of prayer and sharing. Everyone is welcome. Connect groups will continue to explore our parable series this week. If you'd like to join a connect group and you're not already in one, please do let me know and we'd be delighted to introduce you to one. Please contact me or one of our church wardens, Michael or Susan, if you have any concerns for yourself or anyone else. Have a very peaceful and blessed week. Amen. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no
nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of jesus what a beautiful name it is